One, two, three, eyes on me, class. You guys did an excellent job sorting out your materials and your round objects. Can you please put them back in your box? And then we're going to have a discussion about why you just did what you did. Excellent. Now that everybody's stuff is back in their box, will you guys please quietly stand up where you're sitting? And I need my first row that normally comes to join me on the rug. And when you guys come over here, please sit on the rug, crisscross applesauce like we always do on your reading spot. Great job, first row. Now my second row of students, will you please come join your other friends on the rug, please? Remember, crisscross applesauce. Great job, second row. You guys were nice and quickly. Now my third row, can you come over and be as quiet as the first and as quickly as my second? Great job, everybody. All right, so you guys just got done um, arranging a group of objects that were all round. And I had you guys put them in different orders. I had you put them in the biggest, the smallest, the heaviest, to the lightest. Um, I had you guys group them by color. Does anybody think why we might have done this? Okay, you all know we're going to be learning about our science unit. Yep. Does anybody know maybe what our science unit is going to be this this time? Do you guys think it's going to be about weight and balancing? No. We are going to learn about some weights of things, but we're going to talk about the solar system. All right, so this unit is going to be on the solar system. We're going to be talking about the eight planets. I had you guys rearrange these because these objects later on are going to become our planets in the activity we're going to do after we read a story. All right, so these objects are later going to order, put them in order of a way that you would think each one of them to represent one of the eight planets. So you're going to go back to your same groups later on after we read our story. As you know, every time we start a new unit, Ms. Corman likes to start with a read aloud. So this is the book we are going to be reading, and I'm just going to have a seat in my chair so everybody can see. We're going to be reading the story of the solar system. Okay, now looking at the cover, can anybody tell me what exactly you think we're going to be learning about the solar system today from our book? The planets. You think maybe some stars? Why do you think maybe some stars? I think that's a good observation. Because of the pictures? Yep. Very good. What does anybody know what this guy is down on the bottom of my book? An astronaut. Very good. And can somebody raise their hand and tell me what an astronaut does? Bobby, what does an astronaut do? Right, an astronaut goes and travels to our moon and studies the different planets that we have. Good job. You see, you guys already know a lot about our solar system. All right. Our author of the story is Gregory Vagat. But before we start reading, can somebody tell me what our author does for the story? What does our author do for the story? Jessica? Right, our author is the person who writes or creates the words for the story. Great job. Okay, if our author writes and creates the word, what does our illustrator do? Think about what the word illustrate means. Right, he draws the pictures. Right. Well, for this story, we have a very special story today. Our book actually does not have an illustrator because all the pictures in our story are photographs. They were taken through telescopes and from different various um, cameras that as our astronauts or our astronomers study the moon. So we don't actually have an illustrator, but it's always good to know what our illustrator does because he is an, they are an important person in the book. All right, our story is called Solar System by Be Gregory Bagat. As I read this book, I want you guys to pay close attention. I'm going to be stopping at various points and asking you a quick question or two about what we've read so far, just to make sure everybody's paying attention and that's on task, all right? So I need everybody to open up your reading ears and get your eyes on my story as I begin. Solar System by Gregory Bagat. We live on a planet called Earth. Earth belongs to a very large family of eight planets and more than 150 moons. The entire family is known as the solar system. All right. Our first question, how many planets and moons are in the solar system? Who can tell me first how many planets there are? Ashley? Right, there are eight planets planets in our solar system. How about moons? This one could be tricky. It's an awfully big number. How many moons? 
David. Great job, 150. That's a lot of moons, especially when there's only eight planets. So that means there's going to have to be a few moons per planet. Good job. Excellent job. The sun. At night, we see many stars. During the day, we see only one. The sun, the sun looks much larger because it is millions of times closer to us. In fact, the sun is the center of the solar system. The sun has gravity. Gravity is a force that attracts objects to one another. The sun's gravity pulls on the planets and forces them to travel around it. They follow paths called orbits. The sun's gravity keeps the solar system together. You guys are doing a great job so far. Where is the sun located? Where is the sun located in reference to our solar system? Does anybody remember what I said about our, the sun? Becca? It's the center of our solar system, right? So if it's in the center, it pulls everything to it, and it's going to make sure everything orbits or circles around the sun, all right? So our sun is the main focus or the center point. Great job, guys. All right, so these are some interesting facts about the sun that our book shares with us. The size across the sun is 864,970 miles. It is a big sun. The rotation, or one complete spin, takes 24 to 34 days. All right, so the middle of the sun spins faster than its north and south poles. All right, its composition, or what it is made of, is hydrogen and helium. And did you know on the surface, the temperature can get 6,400 degrees Fahrenheit? Whew, we'd all be roasting. That's awfully hot. All right, our next planet we're going to talk about is Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. The side of Mercury faces the sun gets twice as hot as a kitchen oven. Eight hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Mercury is a rocky planet. There are thousands of bowl-shaped holes called craters on its surface. These craters were made when meteors smashed into Mercury. I'm just going to change it, the page back so you guys can see what Mercury looks like. This right here is Mercury. Right, see, so it's kind of like a grayish color and you can see all like the boulders and stuff in it or the craters all right so our interesting facts about mercury the size across is 3031 miles so is mercury smaller or bigger than the sun right it's a lot smaller mercury is only 3000 miles the distance from the sun is 35,340,000 thousand miles so it's very far away but it's the closest planet so I can only imagine what those numbers are going to be later on when I have to read them an orbit length or once around the Sun is 87.97 days that's how long it takes Mercury to go around the Sun a rotation is 58.64 days Mercury has zero moons and it doesn't have any rings around it we're going to learn about our rings later on when we talk about some of our other planets. Rings are these circular things that follow our planets. All right. Our next uh, planet is Venus. Venus is the second planet from the sun. It is nearly as large as Earth. Venus is covered with thick clouds. The sun's heat passes through these clouds and gets trapped at the surface. The trapped heat makes Venus the hottest planet. This is what Venus looks like. It's kind of like a yellowish red. Kind of like our sun because it gets so hot. Remember our hot color is red. Boys and girls, thank you for doing such a good job listening. All right, here's something else about some Venus. Venus is made of rock from volcanoes. Its surface is covered with lava. How do we know about Venus when we can't see its surface? Astronomers... Scientists who study space use spacecrafts to learn about Venus. Right, 
Venus is 7,520 miles across the distance from the sun. Ooh, here's a big number. 67,239,000 miles away. And it, once around the sun, it takes the Venus 224.7 days to get around. That's almost a whole year. The rotation is 243 days. Venus does not have any moons or any rings around it. All right, these are going to be important facts that we're going to have to remember for our test later on. So I hope you guys are paying attention. Earth. Earth is the third planet from the sun. It is mostly covered with water. Earth is home to billions of plants and animals. There is life nearly everywhere you look. Earth is constantly changing winds below, across the surface. Water runs across the land and wears it away. Volcanoes spew lava and make land. What is our Earth consist mostly made of? What is Earth mostly made of? Water. Great job. And how, what does the water do for our life? It provides us something to drink and keeps us healthy. You're right. Does it do anything for plants and animals as well? Good job. You guys remember from our previous units. Good job. Earth is 7,916 miles across. The distance from the sun, we are 93 million miles away. Just think about it, we're that far away and we can get really hot on really sunny days. That is crazy. That just means the sun is that hot. An orbit around the sun takes us one year. A rotation or a, re a rotation is what um, constitutes as our day and night. So it takes 24 hours for the earth to spin completely around. All right, we have one moon and we don't have any rings We're going to learn about Earth's moon. The moon is made of rocks from volcanoes. Sunlight bouncing off its surface makes it look white. Okay, so this is a picture of our moon right here. See how he looks white and it's got some blackish grayish color to it. In 1969, the first humans landed on the moon. These astronauts returned with moon rocks. Then astronomers study the rocks to learn about the moon. Remember, we said this was the astronaut. He is someone that travels to our moon for us to help us get a better idea of what's going on up there and if there's life. Astronomers think the moon was created during a collision. An object the size of Mars collided with Earth. Most of the object combined with Earth to make it bigger, but a chunk flew off. So this became the moon. And this little cart right here is what the astronauts use when they're on the moon to go and study different places so they don't have to walk across the moon. Because remember, gravity is awfully difficult there. So they use a space cart or this little machine right here. Alright. So we're going to talk about our fourth planet from the sun. The fourth planet is Mars. It's reddish. Its surface is covered with rust-colored rocks and dust. So this is what Mars looks like. He's got reddish-colored dust that creates the color of our planet Mars. All right. Mars also has very large volcanoes. The volcano Olympus Mons is there is three times taller than Mount Everest on Earth. Mars has a thin atmosphere surrounding it, but there is not enough air for humans to breathe. If you went there, you would have to wear a spacesuit. So this is Olympus Mons, and this right here, this volcano, is three times bigger than our largest mountain. That's right, Mount Everest. Very good. You were paying attention. I am very impressed. You guys are doing a great job today. some interesting facts about Mars. The size of Mars across is 4,212 miles. The distance from the sun is 141,637,725 miles away. 
The orbit length is 1.88 years. His rotation is 24.62 hours, so a little bit more than Earth's. The number of moons is two, and Mars does not have any rings. Just one more quick picture of the Olympus Mons before I turn the page. Jupiter. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun. It is the largest planet and is nearly 11 times wider than Earth. It is made of gas. Jupiter has a huge storm that swirls like a hurricane. The storm itself is twice the size of Earth. Astronomers have named it the Great Red Spot. So this is what Jupiter looks like. And right here in the very tiny corner, you guys can see what the rate the red spot looks like and that looks like a hurricane because of its swirly pattern you guys everybody see that the swirly pattern of the great red spot Jupiter's facts the size of cross is 800 or 86,880 miles the distance from the Sun 483 million 638,564 miles away. The orbit length, or the time around the sun, is 11.86 years. His rotation is 9.92 hours. It, Jupiter has 50 moons and 3 rings. What does Jupiter have that none of our other planets so far have? What interesting fact have I said that Jupiter has that none of our other planets planets have had thus far. Does anyone remember? Oh uh, yes, Jessica, what, do, what does Jupiter have? Rings. Excellent. And how many rings does it, did I say Jupiter had? Three. So there's going to be another planet that we're going to talk about in a couple minutes that are going to have some rings. And that planet is Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun. It has thousands of narrow rings circling it. The rings are made of rocks, ice, and dust. And this right here is a good picture of what the, a ring looks like. And this is Saturn. And it's nice rings. More than 50 moons orbit Saturn. Astronomers keep discovering more. One moon Titan is wider than Mercury. So Saturn's one moon, which is named Titan, is wider than Mercury. That is crazy. Saturn's interesting facts. The size of crust is 72,363 miles. The distance from the sun, you guys ready for this number? 886,489,000. 415 miles. The orbit length around the sun is 29.44 years. It takes Saturn longer to get around the, the sun than I've been born. Yeah, it's never made it around once in my lifetime. The rotation is 10.66 hours. It has 53 moons that we know of so far. And it has thousands of rings. So it has thousands of these circular things spinning around it. And what, does anyone remember what these rings were made of? Gas, rocks, and ice. Excellent job, boys and girls. Excellent listening skills today. All right. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun. Uranus is four times larger than Earth. Chemicals in the air make that planet look blue. This is one of my favorite planets. I just love the color of it. And the chemicals in the in the planet make it that color. Alright, let's see. Uranus is a sideways planet. It spins like all planets, but it is tilted on its side. For half of its orbit, Uranus's north pole points toward the sun. For the other half, the south pole points towards the sun. Alright, so what that means when it says it's a sideways planet, we're gonna pretend these are our north and south poles of our planets, alright? So our north pole is up on top. And our south pole is on the bottom. Normally, a planet spins this way. It just spins constantly. But Uranus is different. It tilts on its side. So the 
north pole faces the sun for half of the rotation, and then the other half of the rotation, when it spins, our south pole hits it. Yeah, so it sits on its side instead of straight up and down. That's just something interesting about Uranus. Uranus here. All right. Uranus is interesting facts. The size of cross is 31,518 miles. The distance from the sun, 1,868,039,489 miles. The orbit length is 84.01 years. A rotation is 17.24 hours. It has 27 moons and 13 rings. I wonder why we can't see the rings on these planets. I think that's a question we have to study later on in our unit. We have to think about it. We couldn't see Jupiter's rings and we couldn't see Uranus. And I think that's an essential question that we'll look at later on when we're studying the planets individually. We're going to take a day and we're going to study each planet. Give you guys some more information on these planets. All right. All right. Our final planet, or the eighth planet, is Neptune. Neptune is blue in color and about as large as Uranus. Neptune has storms like Jupiter's, but they are a lot smaller. So these little light blue spots are the storms like Jupiter's, but they're a lot smaller. They don't have it as big as it's the great red spot. Remember the great red spot on Jupiter? Yeah, those are much smaller on Neptune. Neptune has several moons. The biggest is Triton. Astronomers have noticed that Triton is getting closer to Neptune. Millions of years from now, Triton could crash into Neptune. Neptune's interesting facts. The size of cross is 38,598 miles. The distance from the sun, 2,819,185,846 miles. The orbit length is 164.8 years. A rotation is 16.11 hours. Neptune has 13 moons and 9 rings that circle it. So we can't see Neptune's rings either. Alright, I'm going to ask you guys a quick question. What do you notice about the distance from the sun and the orbit length? As our distance from the sun got bigger, what happened to the orbit length or the time around the sun? How? They weren't directly related. You've got it. Excellent use of vocabulary for math. That's right. What he means is every time the distance from the sun got larger, the orbit or the time around that it took the planet to circle the sun got larger as well. So they were directly related. As one got bigger, the other got bigger. Excellent vocabulary words. I think you're going to earn a sticker for that one. That was great. We're not even talking about math and he still related it. Asteroids. Thousands of asteroids orbit the sun. These rocks can be hundreds of miles across or the size of a house. Many asteroids orbit the sun between Mars and Jupiter. What are asteroids made of? What did I just say asteroids are made of? Rocks. You've got it. And you could just tell by looking at the picture that that looks like a rock that you would find outside. It's all crater-like and bunched up. And it's oddly shaped. So that's an asteroid. And we're going to talk about some comets. Comets? Far beyond Neptune are billions of chunks of ice called comets. Comets are usually a few miles wide. Sometimes a comet bumps bump toward the sun. The sun's heat starts melting the ice and long white tails of gas streaks out for millions of miles. Many of you, they look like a shooting star. Many of you, I'm sure, have tried looking up on a nice sun that's starless night and seeing shooting stars. All right, so these are some of our vocabulary words. I'm just going to read them to you guys right now. Tomorrow, we're going to put all these vocabulary words plus our planets into our writer's notebook, our social science notebook, first thing tomorrow for our lesson. Our first vocabulary word is going to be asteroids. Remember, asteroids are large pieces of space rock. An astronomer is a scientist who studies objects in outer space. An astronaut... What's an astronaut? Can someone remind me what an astronaut is or give me the definition? What is an astronaut? Ashley, someone who visits the, the planets, travels to outer space. Excellent job. The atmosphere is the mixture of gases that surrounds a planet. Comets are large balls of ice that form long tails when they are near the sun. 
So remember, our comets are balls of ice. Gravity, the force that attracts all objects to one atmosphere. Remember, it pulls them towards the sun. Meteors are pieces of rock or metal from space that fall to a planet. So what's a meteor? Meteors are rocks. Comets are ice. That's going to be the one way that you can dis distinguish those vocabulary words. The moons, balls of rock or ice that orbit the planet. So a moon is both rock and ice. Orbits the path planets travel around the sun. A planet is a large ball of rock or gas that orbits the sun. The solar system, the family of sun, planets, moons, asteroids, and comets. So your solar system is just the family. It brings everything together. And stars are huge balls of hot gas. All right, so we're going to talk about this quick. What is a comet? Large balls of ice, a meteor, is rocks, our moons, rocks, and ice. Great job. And stars, just big balls of gas. Like the Lion King, yes. Like the Lion King. All right, boys and girls, you guys did an excellent job reading and listening to the story today. I am very impressed with how well your ears were open and your eyes remained on the story. Very good job. All right, for our, we're going to do a couple activities now. We're going to do a total of three activities, okay? We're going to do one as a whole class, and that's going to be, we're going to be looking at our planet posters. And as many of you know, I always like to do our English version and a Spanish version, and it helps everybody get to recognize the different words between Spanish and English. So we're going to take these posters, and we're going to put them in our nice big chart behind me, and we're going to put them in order from the way they are in our solar system. So it's going to be the closest to the sun to the farthest from the sun. And as you guys notice, at the bottom of my papers are your different facts that I pulled right here from this book. And these are just going to be interesting facts so you guys will be able to look at and use as a reference when you do our second activity, which you will be going back to your groups of two or three, the same groups that you had, and you're going to be taking these objects that are in your box, your circular objects in your box, and you're going to be putting them in order and each one is going to recognize a planet. You have the choice to do it as from farthest to the sun to closest to the sun, or you can do it reversed, closest to farthest. You have the choice to do it by size, okay? And you could go smallest to largest or largest to smallest as our size. That's going to be your group activity. And then we're going to do an independent practice where everybody's going to make their own solar system, all right? So first, I would like everybody to just stand up we're going to get the wiggles out really fast because you guys are getting a little jittery around my floor. We get the wiggles out, and then we're going to take turns ordering our planets in our chart. All right? All right, ready? Everybody get the jiggles out. Woo! Excellent job. 